Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4, and today we're looking at Candy Wars, which was going to be one of the biggest kids' games of quarter one of 2021, but hmm, there's something quite wrong with this game, and we'll let our host Lipstick Patty tell you all about it. So Lipstick Patty, please spare no bones over this one. Tell us exactly what you think of this game. Now, peeps, here we are, Candy Wars. Now, my team said we should look at this because it's been a bit of a flop. Well, it says, if there has to be war, let it be sweet. Candy Wars is a fast-paced family game. Competitive or cooperative? Right. Family game? Family. Considering that most backers are going to be over 40 on Kickstarter because the prices are <gasps> ding dong ding dong ding dong. If you're going to pick a kids game, you want a kids game that you can play either solo that you want to play or you want to, your game group are going to play, not just your kids because a up kids are going to grow up and grow out of certain kids games and this game's too pink. It's only going to appeal to those that even have girls as a you know, you know, as a kid. So, where's my evidence of this? Well, 218 backers. Dear me. Not even 50% of the goal. Not only that. Let's go down and tackle this tough project. One, the early bird special, which is harming Anyone coming in late because they see this and go, there's a FOMO already here. But it's not FOMO, it's just like someone's got this and I'm not going to get it and I'm going to have to pay for it. These early bird specials are really annoying. The best early bird special you're going to do is a cheaper price on the pledge. Because it means even though I'm paying, then you know I'm still getting the same content. Anyhow, now it does say you can play solo, but again, it's a game that you want to play solo with yourself. It's got these 3D scenarios, as it calls it, but if, for me, you look at these 3D scenarios and you, you think, gimmick, there's going to be a gimmick here. It says, scenarios can be played separately or in a continuous storyline. That sounds like it's none of one or none of the other. It means the, you know, pick, pick it. You know, my favorite, one of my favorite games, Madara, it has a continuous storyline, but it does have its scenarios that are different. And that is the way it should be treated. Put 100% on your storyline and the stuff that are played separately, that is a different game mode that you can play as a one-off with certain friends that aren't in the big campaign. So that's also harming it in my opinion these quotes king of average says my daughter just yesterday said this was her new favorite game but him himself doesn't really want to play it else on his own not with her and she's going to grow old that's the case box appeal too much pink Vibrancy, I don't mind, but it's just too much pink. Also, this the actual how the tiles coordinate with each other, they don't look like they have anything in common. The kind of contrasting each other in style doesn't even look like there's a door you're going through or anything like that. It doesn't look like there's any stairs going up to these levels or any kind of uh, that elevator lift system going up. It's just merely there as a what a teleport up teleport around magic things i mean it's weird because you know you come to fps games you've got fortnite which has a theme of kid it's like a child disney pixar game fortnite you've got apex Re legends a bit more serious you've got the call of duty a bit more serious and then you've got the n64 splatoon which is vibrant and fun but at least it's not too, you know, it, it's, it's, 
pulls everything together. And this doesn't look like it's all together. It looks like it's all disjointed and all this stuff. But, you know. Oh, I mean, just look at this tower. It doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, you look at it, walk past this on a table, you're just going to go, don't want to play that. It has a kind, a kind of an off-putting feel to it. When you look at a game and the board itself doesn't interest you in, you've got a big hurdle. And trust me, you come down a page like I'm doing and you're not even going to be interested in further researching this by looking at a video. So first impressions coming down this page seem to be really hurting it. Now, it's got a D6 for the combat. I much prefer D8 or 10. I'm kind of sick of the D6. <clears throat> Six is kind of like entry level. It's eight years older playing this, but you know, can you imagine your eight year old son wanting to play this? I don't know if you can bring them in. And um, I don't know, it's just, too, it's just weird, isn't it? Anyhow, I'm Generation Y, I can say these things. I'm no millennial. <laughs> So it's 10 minutes per player. So you play it for solo and it's a 10 minute game. What's going on here? And um, Conquest or Campaign. Totally want to go Campaign. Now it's coming in a decent price, 69. Not bad. It does have an MSRP of 79. When have you ever paid an MSRP in the retail space? Not me. They are always undercutting that, and um, it's only Fantasy Flight that have stopped companies undercutting their games, and they can only be cut on certain sales in August. So, you know, this is a one where I'm looking at this Kickstarter and going, I really like the Kickstarter, but hey, I'll just pick it up in retail, because I know I'm going to get it cheaper, don't have to pay for shipping, and the way Kickstarters are doing at the minute, the amount of time before the Kickstarter and the retail box goes out is nil, isn't it? You sometimes... Might as well just wait for it because it's going to be, you know, shipping can take four to eight weeks sometimes and you get it in the retail in that space. So, <laughs> minis themselves, they are adhering to what exactly? We've got gnomes here. Gnomes? Are you serious? Um, war combat gnomes? What's going on here? Some kind of trolls. They don't look that kind of dangerous. Um... Yeah, these 3D tiles, the gimmick. Uh, weapon cards that um, really, my sense of humor is lost on these. Cupcake grenades, M and N automatics, sugar cane, candy canes, what is going on here? Um, so there's like a really bizarre abstract nature going on here and these are supposed to be the gnomes that you're attacking, but they're kind of too cute and gnomes. It's like a gnome war. What, what's going on here? The floor tiles doesn't tell me if they're double sided. So I've got to assume they're not. Um, again, there's no correlation between one and the other. They're kind of you know, just whatever it'll do. No type, no sense of coherence going on here. Roof tiles take that away, leave it. There's no common pattern going through. Um, tokens do look great. Yes, scoreboard here looking interesting in a heart. It's like a love heart, isn't it? This game's kind of pushing that. These pink garish dice cubes and... Mm, yeah. Especially with the setup. The setup also can possibly be difficult because not only are you putting together a grid of squares that you've really got to consult the book and the square. It's going to be like a puzzle to put the map together. Then you've got the awkwardness of making the 3D terrain here. And again, it's going to be like a jigsaw, isn't it? Trying to find the piece that needs to go down on the, on the board. So setup's going to be fairly long. Um, and also these videos, that's a 40 minute long video. We've got a 35 minute video. You know, these long form videos have their place. Okay. We've just got a playthrough. That itself is 45 minutes. We've got one in French at 15 minutes. That's not too bad, but we need some kind of quick 
version of something. Um, we've got the five minute ones here, but you know they're not subjective. They don't talk about negativity. They're kind of too positive on these channels. So um, again, the, the videos seem not to be doing justice for it because the, the lengths, most of the lengths are, are 30 plus, right? So there we go. And really, I think the team would have been better if they'd sent it for the Dice Tower and got um, them to do a playthrough live because they do have probably the best young family audience that are on Kickstarter. So, you know, actually going to, you know, the big one here, which is King of Average. Were his fans a mainly mini hyped, super big campaign game? Um, <laughs> every specialty, and they give him this kids game. Um, and, and again, these specialities that they've come here, they don't really deal with kids games in general. And you need to really go to families that have got kids and are doing kids channel. And the Dice Tower have lots of. Um, people in their channel that are kid friendly, they follow kid stuff, so it bonkers, blows my mind that they've gone for some reviewers that don't even have a fan base of kids games, so. Mm. I know on this channel we came for all kinds of games, Euro games, family games, and big campaign games, small games, we try and cover general here because there's four people voting in on things, and so we've got like a, a large um, love for things. And optional buys, these are get dice for the color of each gnome. This is kind of nice. Get rid of the pink dice. <laughs> and sleeve pack thrown in. I do like that, obviously, but. Stretch goals. It says there's, there's gonna be a Kickstarter exclusive on the stretch goals, but the first one not even unlocked, not even Kickstarter exclusive, so. There you go. I just think, you know, as a, as a theme, it's kind of 1960s Funkiverse, colorful vibrancy, not quite the minis, kind of not anything you'd like to put out um, on a display case. They just don't look that great. And the type of minis you might see at a convention that are going for 50 cent because the, the basement ones now, right? I just think this game's going to be forgettable, peeps. I really do. Let's just forget about the the, the um, shipping prices because, you know, the, the less I say, the better of certain things. And we're already at the edge of the campaign. So here we are, 11 days. The campaign... Wants $5 for Pledge Manager, 69 going in. Um, and you know potentially you can get it cheaper at retail again does your play group want to have a big um, girly game does your eight-year-old son want to play a girly game does your eight-year-old daughter want to play a girly game maybe she <laughs> there's this kind of weirdness going on and it's very abstract world gnomes having a war you've got minis that i don't think people will be interested in uh, there's certainly a lot of co carbon copy minis if you look at this picture here and when you when you when you talk about war you don't really think about people throwing sugar at each other or anything like that do you it's war is war and this is so abstract in a way and trying to make it fluffy but really, come on, there's, um, it's going to be a hard sell. So, yeah, do we recommend it? We absolutely do not recommend it, even though we've got kids in the family and family members that are around our playgroup. I just don't think they're going to want to be interested in playing this. But how about you? What do you think? Have you looked at this campaign and also had the first impressions of Not For Us? What hit? home for you that you didn't like it probably the pink cover <laughs> do we think it will fund well if i want to predict that i'll say no it's better it's better actually finding retail space the trouble with the kickstarter is that it's um, might not even green light itself for retail which stinks really but um 
Let's just see when it was supposed to come out anyway. March 2020, so it is way off the pace. It's going to be another year before you're going to see it anyway, so it's got a lot of um, production to go. And with 218 backers at least, oh man, it's, it's not looking good. In fact, I will say the, the battle has been lost. You, you lose the battle, have you lost the war? Time will tell. I don't think anything's going to come to this campaign, which is going to surprise me to come back for a final thoughts. I think I'm solid here. Can't really change everything, can it? So, oopsie daisy, Candy War. You've lost the battle, and have you lost the war? Well, on that bombshell, thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Lipstick Patty. This has been Kickstarter Radio 102.4. You take care, stay safe, and bye-bye for now.